Thank you, Greg, for leading us into worship on this Palm Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Friends, as you look at your bulletin today, you see that it says Palm slash Passion Sunday. And we do this service uh, kind of in two parts. The first part is celebrating and remembering Palm Sunday. And then we also shift to the passion of Jesus because we know that sometimes schedules don't allow people to join us for our shameless plug coming Maundy Thursday service or Good Friday service. And it's a little bit weird then to have Palm Sunday shouting Hosanna and then Easter Sunday saying Jesus rose from the dead. And sometimes again, schedules don't allow people to be here for uh, Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. And then it's like, what? We're, what are we celebrating? And so that's why this service is designed as it is today. Uh, we have a number of things in your insights that you receive every week. Uh, and if you're not receiving the insights uh, by email, please let us know. As we've said a number of times, sometimes uh, uh, names and addresses just kind of drop off mysteriously. And we don't know why. And please remember as well that the same master list that sends out, that is used to send out uh, the insights and the uh, services during the week is also the same uh, list that sends out the prayer requests as well. And so if you're wondering, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting those prayer requests, maybe that's because your name has kind of dropped off mysteriously. And if that's the case, please let us know because you should be getting uh, those prayer requests if we have your email. A couple things in here. There's Holy Week uh, services listed, which Maundy Thursday at 7 o'clock, Good Friday at noon, followed by a luncheon, and Easter morning we have two services. Our first service is at 7 o'clock, and weather permitting and, and uh, uh, is at 7 o'clock out at the campfire ring. We'll have a campfire followed by a light breakfast. And then we also have our service at 1030 where we always uh, highlight that with the hallelujah chorus at the end. So please take note of all of your insight information there. Uh, there is an Easter lily sign up. Uh, and 
the Easter lilies always beautify our sanctuary. If you'd like to sign up for that and have uh, Easter lilies in honor of or in memory of anyone, please sign up. That is going to be on a little table as you exit the sanctuary right here today. Also on our Holy, Week's, uh, Holy Week uh, calendar is the community breakfast, which is on uh, Holy Saturday. And so we invite you to come and serve at the community breakfast or as well, come and eat and invite someone. Uh, it'd be great. You know, you invite them to the community breakfast and they love it. Of course, how can they not? And then you say to them, hey, come join me in worship tomorrow morning on Easter. How could they say no? How could they say no? So we invite you to consider that possibility as well. Information in here about the rummage sale. Uh, there's different sign up uh, things on the narthex there also. And now is the time when you start reminding friends, neighbors, and relatives of yours, hey, it's time for some spring cleaning and I know where you can drop off treasures. It's for our rummage sale. And so we invite you as well to do that. As you leave today also, uh, there are a number of these sheets that uh, how to make a palm cross like the one I'm wearing. Uh, you can pick those up and there are a number of crosses already made if you want to take that home. But please, uh, take some crosses home. Maybe you've got some grandkids or some, some kids or little, you know whatever. Uh, maybe it's a little craft that you could do together with them. I think that might be it for m my announcements and I think so. Let us now continue in worship on this Palm and Passion Sunday. We invite you to stand for our opening hymn that will be on the screen or in your hymn. Please join us in the call to worship, responsive call to worship. Open to me, this is found in your bulletin by the way, open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. Hosanna, Hosanna. I thank you Lord that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
O Lord, save us. Grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. Mouths in hand, we join in the festal procession up to the altar. Hosanna. my God, and I will give thanks to you. I will extol you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, His love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Hosanna. Well, let's give our musicians a little round of applause. And you can stay here, all the kids, after you put your chimes back. And if there are any other children here today, I'd like to invite you to come join us in the front for our children's sermon this morning. So, uh, you know, it's great to use our talents and their talents in accompanying us in our opening hymn like that. And I just have a feeling maybe we're developing, this is like the Class A minor league for the B Stewart Memorial Handbell Choir in a few years. I think that's a good way to have things planned out. Well, it is good to see you guys as always. And what word were we just, what word was a key word that you guys were hearing people saying? Yes, Maeve. Hosanna. That's right. Hosanna. And do you, do you guys remember what was happening uh, when the people were shouting Hosanna? Jesus was coming by and people were, let's see if everyone can do this. All of you out here, can you wave your little palm branches for us to show the kids that you can do that? People were putting these on the ground, and Jesus was on a little colt, the foal of a donkey, and he was riding by, and they were shouting, and they were cheering, and they were cheering, and they were shouting, because this is great news. Hmm. Are any of you cheerleaders? Oh, you are? Let's see. Were, were any of you cheerleaders? Oh, good. Not, not, I wish I thought there might have been more. Well, cheerleaders are very important. They get people excited for things. In high school, I was in wrestling, and I remember one, there's one cheer that I remember from wrestling in high school. And he, this is how it went. It went, the cheerleaders would lay along, sit along the mat and, you know, hit, hit the mat. And it was, roll them over, lay, lay them flat, pin their shoulders to the mat. Let's everybody do that cheer, okay? Ready? On three. One, two, three. Roll them over, lay them flat, pin their shoulders to the mat. That's right. And I remember that. And you know what? I wonder, I wonder if Jesus remembered the cheering that was going on when he was coming into town. A few days later, uh, he would be put to death. But I wonder if he remembered that, even when he was on the cross, if he remembered, oh, those people, they were cheering for me, and I love those people, 
And Jesus loves all of us, no matter what. But I want you guys to remember that as well. So you guys probably aren't going to go around cheering and saying Hosanna to people this week. You guys are probably not, although maybe, maybe you're going to be going around doing the wrestling cheer this week just for fun. But probably not. But here's something you can do. You can be cheerful and be encouragers to other people that maybe are having a hard time this week. Do any of you ever have a hard time at school or anything or with your friends? Yep. Do, do any of you ever have a hard time at school or work or where you live? Do, do you? Oh, good. Well, maybe all of us can remember uh, that uh, Hosanna is, means save us, that Jesus does save us. And the, the times that we might be going through might be kind of hard, but we can remember that Jesus is our friend and he can save us. Chloe, did you lose a tooth? You did? All right. That's awesome. I can see you. You're like, ooh. Well, we're thankful that Chloe lost the tooth. We're thankful that all of you guys are here. And we're thankful that you guys came in and helped us in our worship service this morning. So let's pray. God, we are so thankful for so many things. Things that we can remember that bring us happiness uh, later on in life. Like that wrestling cheer. I remember that. That made me feel good. And God, maybe Jesus remembered that the people, most of the people weren't against him. They were saying, Hosanna. They were cheering Jesus on. And God, may our memories and our love, remembering the love you have for us, may that encourage us this week. And hopefully we can be an encourager and a friend to others this week as well. Whether we are young or whether we are older, help us to remember to do that. God, we give you thanks for all of these kids that are here and their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles that bring them here to learn about your great love for them. We give you thanks and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and thanks again for being part of our worship service. And remember, you can take some of those palm branches home and those papers, and you can make some of those, some crosses that look just like this. It's a great craft to know. Thanks for coming, and you can go back to your seats, or you can go up to the balcony because there's some teenagers up there as well today.
Thank you, Mim and Erica and Carl and Senior Choir for that. Our scripture text for today, uh, the first one is John 12, verses 12 through 16. John 12, 12 through 16. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet them. Praise God, they said, which, uh, Hosanna, which means save us. Praise God. Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. May God add a blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. And friends, grace and peace to each of you as always from our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, lately on uh, the internet, something that's been popping up on my popping up for me has been some magicians, a card magician specifically. And I think when you click on it to watch it, then the mysterious algorithm, you know, shoots some more of those uh, card musicians toward you or whatever you're clicking on, uh, they can figure out that it's been an interest of yours. And uh, I'm amazed by these card musicians, magi- card musicians, yeah, ah! these card magicians, they, uh, how they do the things. Like, they, they, they'll shuffle the deck and do all this and flip things around, and all of a sudden they'll, they'll pull out the card that you, 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 you picked. How do they do this? Or, or they'll deal hands of, uh, for poker, and they end up with four aces. H- how do they do this after shuffling all these things? It's, it's mind-boggling. And some of the ones that I've been watching uh, are, the, here are three names. One is Jeremy Tan, another one is Magic Amanda, and another one is Card Magic by Jason. Just wanted to give them a little shout out, you know. I wonder what the odds are uh, of, of them doing the tricks. For, for me to do them, they would be like zero, you know, but they are so skilled at these things uh, that it, it really, it, it's just amazing. So I thought I would do something. I thought I would try something, a a little trick for all of us, a few tricks for all of us here. I need three volunteers, and don't worry, you don't even get up out of your seat. Who's going to be my first volunteer? Thomas, thank you for volunteering. Thomas, I've got a dice right here, right? I got a die, apparently. Uh, Let's see if Thomas can predict what what number is going to be rolled here. One through six, what's your answer? Three. Three. Let's see. Uh, Jenny, what is it? It's one. (laughs) Didn't get it right. Okay, here we go. And now here's a deck of cards. There are 52 cards in a deck, right? So you can see on the video, you know, it's a regular deck of cards. I'll do a little, little, tiny little shuffle here. I'll set them right here. Well, I'll set them right here. And now I need another volunteer. Who's going to be my second volunteer? Harv, what card is the top card right here? The six of clubs. And you can see that I'm not doing anything to manipulate that or anything. And it's the four of clubs. It's the four of clubs. You know? The odds of getting the die correct is one out of six, right? Deck of cards randomly picking is one out of 52. And now I need another volunteer. And I'm actually going to ask Jeff to help out. This is the covenant hymnal. And there are 700, excluding some of the readings in the back, there are 777 hymns in here. I'm going to ask Jeff to, so I'm not looking, I'm going to ask Jeff to randomly open to one without any of you seeing 
Who's going to guess what hymn number Jeff is opening up the hymnal to? None of you, because you can kind of maybe see him. How about somebody from this side over here? Thank you, Roland. What number between 1 and 777? 432. 432. And what did you pick? 557. 557. And by, by chance, what is number 557? I am the bread of life. Has anybody ever heard of that one as a I am the bread of life. Well, I think we have maybe have sung it before for communion, but uh, number 557, I am the bread of life. So Roland had a 1 out of 777 chance to get that right. Harv, 1 out of 52, and Thomas, 1 out of 6. Those are, I don't know what the odds, you know, those are the odds, right? Well, these days, friends, these days, Thursday, Friday, yesterday, and today, People are thinking a lot about odds and probabilities, especially with what's going on right now? March Madness, the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. People fill out their brackets, and what are the odds? Just by chance, I looked this up at Forbes.com. By randomly picking, uh, by randomly picking teams, just by flipping a coin, this team or that team in each game, there are 63 games in the tournament. By randomly flipping a coin, does anybody know what the odds are of getting a perfect bracket? It's never been done before. What are the odds of that happening? Does anybody know? Well, I looked it up, and I know. Forbes.com says it's astronomical. In fact, it would be just by random chance, picking each game, random chance, it would be about one in nine quintillion. One in nine quintillion. And I didn't know how much that was. So I looked it up. From QMath.com. Quintillion is a number represented by one followed by 18 zeros. Or if you do it with the fancy numbers, it would be 10 and then next to it, 10 to the 18th power. 10 to the 18th power is one quintillion. The Old Testament is filled with predictions, just like we were trying to predict what number or on the dice, what card to pick, what hymn to pick. The Old Testament is filled with predictions, although we call them prophecies about the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Savior, who is Jesus. One of them, one of these prophecies about the Messiah comes from Zechariah 9.9 9, that says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. And from our text from today, Verses 14 and 15. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid. People of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. That prophecy was fulfilled. It's good news for us. Good news for us is this, that we can rejoice as we read and remember and sing about Jesus fulfilling one of the prophecies that point to him being the Messiah. We've sung Hosanna and Hosanna two times this today. We can sing about him being the Messiah, coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey's colt, fulfilling that prophecy. But what are the odds of him fulfilling other prophecies? I said that the Old Testament had a whole bunch of them. And this is from uh, Nick Cady, N-I-C-K-C-A-D-Y dot org, uh, and a website called Theology for the People, and an article entitled, The Statistical Probability of Jesus Fulfilling the Messianic Prophecies. Nudge your neighbor now, because with that title, probably a lot of people fell asleep, right? <laughs> the statistical probability of Jesus fulfilling the messianic prophecies. 
And it says this, Professor Peter W. Stoner was chairman of the departments of mathematics and astronomy at Pasadena City College and chairman of the science division at Westmont College in California. In his book, Science Speaks, Professor Stoner outlines the mathematical probability of one person in the first century when Jesus lived, one, one person in the first century fulfilling just eight, just eight of the most clear and straightforward messianic prophecies. The professor writes this, we find the chance that any man might have lived down to the present time and fulfilled all eight prophecies is one in 10 to the 19th power. And you remember getting a perfect bracket, which has never been done, was 10 to the 18th power. Even more rare is one man fulfilling just eight of those prophecies. But he went on to calculate more things. He, he uh, uh, broadened it out a little bit to 48 of the prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah. And that went to one in 10 to the 157th power. I have no idea what... 157 zeros after the one. And there are 332 prophecies about the coming of the Messiah in the Old Testament. Smarter people than me have said that Jesus fulfilled more than 300 of them and that the other 32 will be fulfilled when he comes again. Imagine that number to fulfill 100, over 300 of them if 48 of them is 10 to the 157th power. The numbers boggle my mind, and I don't really understand them. I just know it's unbelievable, except it is believable. Because, friends, here is good news. We, we, you and me, all of us, the person sitting next to you, the person in front of you, the person behind you, we are not just numbers and statistics and probabilities to Jesus. And he is not just a number and a statistic and a probability to us. Our rejoicing, our happiness, our joy, our hosannas today join with the hosannas of those who saw him on the donkey's colt. Not just because that checks off or fulfills a prophecy, but because we know that Jesus is the Son of God who has come into the world to offer us peace with God and peace with one another and forgiveness of sins and life eternal. For that, for that, we can truly say, praise God and Hosanna. Amen. Friends, just as the people laid down their palms before Jesus, we lay down or we offer our lives, our time, our presence, our relationships, and our finances. We lay them before God. And so we say, God, accept them today and use them as blessings as we offer them to you. We call upon our ushers now to receive our tithes and offerings.
Please be seated. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the gifts that have been offered today as tithes and offerings and for the gifts that have been offered in our worship service as well, the gifts of fellowship and music and singing and scripture and your word proclaimed. And God, there are so many gifts that we have received. We give you thanks for all of these. On this Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, we worship with mixed feelings. We come joyful and celebrating, waving some palms and watching kids waving palms. But we know what's coming this week in this journey to the cross and to the empty tomb. But first, God, this holy week, we ask that you journey with us and help us to be mindful of your son, Jesus, as he journeyed that week. We lift up areas of armed conflict and those who have lost loved ones or are injured, or recovering from acts of violence and from extreme weather and various events around our globe and our area. We pray for specifically for those in Russia mourning the loss of loved ones in the concert attack and those who are injured and those caring for them. God, we lift up covenant missionaries Anna and Peter Kim and the country of Taiwan where they serve. God, be present to them this week and this month and be present to all that they minister to and provide them with what they need. We pray the same, God, for missions and ministries that we support locally, including Bridge of Hope and our community breakfast. Thank you for each of these, God, and thank you for the influences they have, and we ask that you resource and you provide. God, we lift up those who are going through some medical situations. We thank you that Ron Hilmer is home and doing okay after a mild heart attack. And we pray, God, for a friend of the Scribners, Paul. God, we lift up Janet, Donna Hodson's sister-in-law. She is home now and has some testing this week. We pray, continue to pray for her, and we pray for Janet's husband, Jeff, Donna's brother, who was in the ER yesterday. God, this is a lot for that family, so we ask for your intervention and your healing hands to be around them. We also ask for your healing hands on Peggy Bilborough, who fell on a flight of stairs and broke 16 bones. God, she has to be in utter agony, so we ask that you be with her and heal her body and be with those who are caring for her. Lord, we take a moment now of silence to offer to you our silent praises and concerns. Thank you, God, for knowing each one of us, for knowing our prayers into our hearts and our lives and our church and churches and our countries and cities. God, heal us, we pray. We offer these prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught each of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Gethsemane. While they were there, he said, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be distressed and troubled. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And he went back to where Peter, James, and John were, and found them sleeping. So you could not stay awake with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with a large crowd from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Friend, do what you are here to do. And they seized Jesus and arrested him. Have you come out to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. They took Jesus to Caiaphas, the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and teachers came together. Peter had followed at a distance. Going inside, he sat with the guards by the fire to see how this would end. The chief priest and council were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they found none. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, This man said he will destroy this temple and will build it up again in three days. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. The high priest stood before Jesus and asked, Have you no answer? Why is it that they testify against you? I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. But I tell you, you will see the chosen one sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Blasphemy, why do they still, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? He deserves death. Then they blindfolded him, spat in his face, and struck him. Prophesy, prophesy, who is it that struck you? The guards took him away and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls came up to him. You were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth, weren't you? I do not know or understand what you are talking about. As Peter was walking out into the entryway, the cock crowed. The servant girl began telling those around her, This man is one of them. Again, Peter denied it. This time, a few of the bystanders said to him, Certainly, you, you are, are one of them, them. <laughs> for, your for your accent, accent betrays, betrays you. you. I do not know what you're talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time, and Peter remembered that Jesus had told him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept bitterly. Very early in the morning, the chief priests, the elders, the scribes, and the whole council reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented. He threw down his pieces of silver in the temple. Then he left and hung himself. Now Jesus stood before Pilate the governor, who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Do you hear how many accusations there are against you? 
but Jesus gave no answers, and Pilate was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the custom was to release one prisoner for the crowd. They had a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. Whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who is the Messiah? Barabbas. The chief priests and elders convinced the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. Barabbas. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas. Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Crucify him. Crucify him. But why? What evil has he done? Crucify, Crucify him. him. Crucify him. I am innocent of this man's blood. Do it yourselves. So Pilate released Barabbas, and after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus in front of the whole cohort. They stripped him of his clothes and put a purple cloak on him. They twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head, and they began to mock him. Hail, King, King of the Jews. Jews! They struck Jesus in the head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. They came upon a passerby that was coming, from, coming in from the country and compelled him to carry the cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, This, this is Jesus, Jesus, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews. They crucified two bandits with him, one on his right and one on his left, and those who passed by derided him. So, you who would destroy the temple and build it up in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. He saved others, yet he cannot save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, Come down now from the cross, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon, when Jesus cried in a loud voice, My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me. Listen, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to Jesus to drink. But others said, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and took his last breath. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. When the centurion who stood in front of Jesus saw what had happened, he was terrified. Surely this man was the Son of God. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. When evening came, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for the body. When Pilate learned that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph bought a linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been cut out of rock. He rolled a stone against the entrance and went away. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Savior, praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs>
friends, this week, may God, whose arms were spread on the cross to embrace the entire world, including us, may this same God help us this week to take up the cross and follow him. Amen. Thank you.